Today you'll use two new techniques to verify the purity and identity of the samples you separated last week. One of those techniques is obtaining the melting point of your sample. We have digimelts in our lab that are digital thermometers and we also have some equipment we need to use in order to take the melting point. You'll need a melting point capillary. This is a glass tube that has a round sealed end and an open glass end where you add your sample. So the first thing to do to start to take the melting point is make sure you have the tube and your sample so you don't need a whole lot of your sample. It should be a nice dry solid. You can turn on the digimelt on the back side and you'll hear some noises and it should boot up. The instructions for using the digimelt are printed right on the front and we also have information sheets in the same area of the lab. So take the open end of your, digim of your uh, capillary tube and tap it gently into the sample. You just want to take a tiny little amount in there. You don't need too much for a sample. And then you'll come over to the digimelt, turn it upside down so that you have the sample's sealed tube or sealed end pointing down and place it into one of these three slots here. Once you have it there, you can touch the button labeled tube tapper. Watch it shake the sample down from the top all the way down to the bottom. We don't need to have a whole lot of sample. The smallest amount that's visible in the capillary tube is all you need to obtain a melting point. So once you have your sample and you've programmed the digimelt to go ahead and start warming up, then you can come over to the area where we have three little slots and you can put your capillary in there. Either one of the three slots will work. You can see we have a magnifying glass and that's going to allow you to view the sample and you're looking for two temperatures. The temperature at which the melting, uh, the solid starts to turn into a liquid and the temperature at which everything has turned into a liquid. Once you've completely finished with the instrument, you'll need to turn it off, of course, by turning off the power button in the back and all of your samples that were in the three slots, if you took more than one, need to go into the broken glass. So after you obtain the melting point, you'll practice another technique which will allow you to get a little bit more information about the identity and purity of your samples from last week. So while melting point is a useful piece of data, it doesn't give you the entire story. A second technique which can help you learn more about the purity and identity of your components is called thin layer chromatography, or TLC for short. TLC separates compounds based on their differing polarities. You need to have sort of a saturated atmosphere and kind of a sealed jar in order to do this experiment. So you'll need a 150 mil beaker and a piece of filter paper. We're going to use that to line the beaker so that we can get the solvent to kind of wick up the filter paper through capillary action and saturate the atmosphere. We've already gone to the effort of finding out a good solvent combination for this experiment. So you need a sample of that, about three to four milliliters. With your graduated cylinder, measure that out and pour it into the beaker to make your TLC chamber. Finally, to make sure that this is entirely saturated, you'll take a watch glass and put it on top so that it's nice and sealed. The next step is to prepare your TLC plate for the developing chamber. To carry out a TLC analysis, you'll need a TLC plate, which has a solid support coated onto plastic in this case, and it's made of alumina. Alumina is just aluminum oxide, and it's fairly polar. The idea behind TLC is that samples are either stuck and clinging to the solid support, or they want to move with the solvent up the plate. In either case, try not to handle the TLC plate with your bare hands and hold it by the edges. You never want to use ink, you always want to use pencil. You'll mark your TLC plate with two lines about a centimeter from the bottom and a centimeter from the top. Mark three equidistant dots, one for acetaminophen, one for aspirin, and one for caffeine for this last experiment. We'll provide you with standards of the pure samples and you'll be comparing your isolated samples with our standards. You'll need capillary tubes, which are tiny little spotters allowing you to transfer small amounts of each of your samples to the TLC plate. Taking one of the standards, 
In your lab, they'll be at three different benches so that you don't get them confused and contaminated. Remove the lid and take a small spotter. Just barely dip it into the solvent. A tiny amount of acetaminophen solution will be transferred just by capillary action. After you close the jar, take your sample of acetaminophen and barely touch the end of that glass tube to the dot you've labeled acetaminophen. You'll see it darken just temporarily and you'll want to touch the plate a few times. This will ensure that you have transferred enough sample to be analyzed. Once you've done that about five or six times with a tiny capillary like this, discard the capillary because you don't want to contaminate anything else and take the second standard. In this case, I've picked aspirin. Open it up, take another capillary, and again, get a small sample of aspirin. Once you move that out of the way, repeat the same process by touching the end of the capillary to the aspirin dot. Again, try not to touch other parts of the TLC plate and try to draw, draw the spotter directly to the pencil dot labeled aspirin. Sometimes aspirin is difficult to see, so we're gonna check that in a second, but try to touch aspirin many times to your TLC plate. Finally, we have caffeine. Take a third spotter, dip it into the caffeine sample, and spot the caffeine spot. Again, touching it just a tiny little bit at a time until you've transferred a material there. Now, what we'd like to do is verify that we have some sample on each of those locations to make sure our TLC plate is actually going to be successful once we develop it. We won't be able to tell if our TLC was successful unless we know we transferred sample to our, our plate. A UV lamp is one way of visualizing a TLC plate. Chemical compositions can also be used, such as molybdenum and other metals, but we use a, T a UV lamp in this lab. So never let it shine on your skin directly and don't shine it into your eyes. Don't look into it directly. It's like a really powerful black light. So if we turn it on and hold the black light or UV lamp above the samples, you'll see that they're darker than the rest of the plate. They're actually quenching UV fluorescence and that means since they're dark, we have successfully transferred enough sample and we can proceed with visualizing the TLC plate. So that's next. To develop your TLC plate, Go back to your developing chamber after it's been 10 minutes or so and remove the watch glass. Continue to hold your TLC plate by the sides. Remove the lid and drop the TLC plate into the chamber, keeping it upright and resting it against the side of the beaker. Replace the lid and wait until your solvent, as you can see creeping up the TLC plate, has reached your top line that you marked. This is called the solvent front. The area where you marked the spots is called the origin. You're looking for how far certain spots move up the plate relative to one another, but you have to have a finish line. When the solvent front reaches the finish line up here, that's when you'll remove the TLC plate from the chamber. When the solvent front reaches the top line, remove the TLC plate as carefully as possible. Hold it vertically a little bit so that it dries. Since this solvent has a little bit of acetic acid, you're going to need to wait a little bit in order for it to dry. And then we'll go back to the UV lamp and visualize the TLC plate. Sorry. After you've removed the silica TLC plate, not alumina, from the developing chamber, you'll need to see how successful the developing was. So you'll need a pencil and the UV lamp we used earlier. Turn on the UV lamp and hold it so that it's above your TLC plate. You should see dark spots corresponding with the components that have moved up various distances up the plate. Because this will fade over time, you want to gently circle the spots with a pencil. Try to generally get the idea of where they're located and then you'll have completed the visualization of the TLC plate. Your teaching assistant will discuss how to calculate the retention factor or RF values 
in order to interpret the rest of the plate and compare it with your samples.